Welcome to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. The narrator's having a break this weekend, so it's just me, and I'm going to be doing, telling you all about my guilty pleasure, which is my love for the game Talisman. So let's go to the main video and tell you why I think this is one spectacular game that deserves a space on your shelf. Guilty Pleasure, Talisman, haha, <laughs> the 4th edition revised. Now this game is absolutely spectacular, but what you can see here now is the vanilla Talisman. Now, I think that the vanilla Talisman is an okay game, but I wouldn't actually recommend it due to its limited scope of an adventure game because for example your characters all start off at what i call level four which means if you've got a, a strength character he'll have a strength of four or if you've got a magic character um he'll start off with a craft or she will start off with a craft of four so at level four you, all you're limited is to go around the outer board of what you can see here you can't go to the um, middle middle bit of the board because there's this river going around and um, there is a bridge to cross the river but it's the sentinel bridge is like a high you need to get like level nine to cross that at least give you a chance to get across in fact going across that bridge is like a little bit of a the worst route you can go because in the vanilla you do have like a shop it's a very expensive shop though and um, but you can get an axe and if you land on any woods or forest you can chop down the trees and make a raft which lets you to cross the into the inner period now if you've got vanilla though you're gonna have to go to the inner period and go to the warlock's cave to actually get a quest because you need to fulfill the warlock's quest to actually get a talisman that then lets you go into the center area now here's the thing if you've ever played a game where you go through a dungeon to do a quest and go all the way back to the quest giver only for him to say oh and by the way you need to pick up this item and you've got to go back all the way into that dungeon and it's like why didn't you just give me that quest when you give me the first quest it's kind of ugh. and that's what it's kind of like when you go for your talisman quest because the quest that it gives you you may have already done that during the game and it's like oh now if you start to get the expansions though um they give you warlock quest deck and that deck you start you give everybody um those cards when they start the game so you immediately start off with a warlock quest and you can um then achieve your talisman much easier so it, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to go to the center area in fact when you get the expansions the center area you're only ever gonna go there if you're going to the center or something has happened in the game where you have to go to the center and if you've got just the vanilla there's one of these cards is you get robbed it's, it's the worst card in the whole adventure deck. You're going to get robbed and they steal all your equipment and they take it to the oasis in the, in the, uh, in the middle, in the inner region. And there you have to cross the river to go and get your stuff. So that is like the most painful card you're going to get in the deck. So also when you actually go from when you've got like level five let's say you hit level five you've really got to get like level 10 before you go to the center because as soon as you go into the center there's a dps check just to make sure you've got like the, a level that's high enough and going around the board to get from level five to level 10 is really kind of oh it's so irritating because it's, it's kind of hard and that's where you feel the crunch of the roll of the dice and the dice movement because you feel like you're at the mercy of the dice when you're at this not to mention as cards come around the board some of the places will get replaced by a event which puts a place on that um, square so you get less options to actually get adventure cards and it can become a little bit of tedium and that's why i don't like vanilla talisman 
because you know it's like it's it's a, a beautiful game when you get to level five but when you get to level five you really need to go here and this is the the mountain it's like phenomenal you go to the here level five and the roll and move when you when you need to go to a new area of the board you don't even realize the roll and move at all because what the roll and move is actually giving you is two options to actually find safety because what you want on a turn is to keep yourself safe <laughs> so there's so much danger in this game and just i'm going to take kind of the journey you're going to be on if you've got the four corners so you hit level five you go into the um you go into like the mountainous region and the mountainous region has a lot of gems and jewels in the mountain deck which you can really like you can hold like um five items so you can like get five gems and take you know you need to sell them when you get to the city but it's kind of like if you've only got this region with the vanilla what are you going to spend all that money on because the shop that you get with vanilla is just not it's boring it's got like a generic sword plus one strength it's got a, an axe it's got nothing magical if you're a craft so it, it's like it heavily pushes you towards a strength character and um now you're going one way around this, you're snaking around the mountain, and if you decide to turn back, which you might have to do, you are committed to going back. You're like retreating out of there. And if you go to the end, there's a boss, and if you kill the boss, this guy has like four treasures you can pick from. It's like a little deck that you can choose from, and it's got an amazing mount. It really has an amazing mount. Mounts in this game let you roll two dice for movement, and that's really good. But so if you're coming from the mountain with a lot of gems, you really need the city board. And the city board, oh my god, this really pushes the RPG element in it. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Now, the city board, it comes with um, wanted posters, so when you defeat monsters, um, that's like the way to level up your character because monsters might, um, you know, you kill like two or three monsters and that'll give you like a level up. And when you've got like a lot of money, you really want to come into the city. And the city has some high, has its own city deck as well. So as you're trying to get into the shops, you are going to be pulling city cards out. And then they can be really like touch and go like really hard. So you need to kind of have some strength coming in here. But if you're coming from the mountain, you could be at level seven and that's gonna be strong enough to go into the city. Um, but you don't wanna go into the city at level four because there's gonna be like enemies there that are way higher than that and they're gonna potentially kill you. So and in fact, in the city, there's jailers there that will put you in jail if you lose in combat. So that's a bit of a pain. Now. The city has some fantastic shops for all classes in the game. Um, like the Magic Emporium to get like magic staves and things to increase your craft is fantastic. To get like um, wizard books so that you always refresh your spells. And there's all sorts of great things in there if you're rolling a magic craft character. Now, if you're going for um, a strength character, they have an armorer's shop, which is phenomenal because you get full plate armor in there. You can get all sorts of weapons, including a flail, which lets you roll two dice in combat. And if you get two flails, that's three dice in combat. And if you've got a warrior, oh my God, who already starts with an, a bonus of rolling two dice in combat and you get two flails, that's four dice in combat. It's like massively OP. <laughs> the warrior gets two flails but don't you worry because if someone rolls a warrior who has a massive advantage in strength or you roll an alchemist who can basically burn all these objects into gold 
They are like OP. But in this game, they do have PvP. And it has got permadeath, this game as well. And PvP is absolutely a thing that's necessary to win the game. Now, at this stage, if you've got these corner boards, you will have different endings for the middle. Because if you've just got vanilla, you reach the crown of, crown of command. And you're kind of rolling dice to send out like a fireball to where your other players are and you've got to be like the last man standing to win but like the mountain board one of the um end achievements is going to be the mountain king is actually going to go to the center as a boss so there'll be like an end boss to fight when you get there and all this stuff now there is one of the complaints of the city is that it's just a shopping area. And Fantasy Flight, when they had the license, they produced a tunnel and bridge which linked the city to the dungeon. And what that did, it meant that when you go through the city, the, you can go into the sewer of the city and fight the Rat King. And the Rat King has some objects from the armory, so you might be able to get some full plate or a flail from this rat and it's like so you go in when you're coming from the mountain you've got some good money you're going to buy some good stuff and then you can go and kill the rat king on the way out so you feel like you're hitting another boss when you go to that corner interestingly though the the city has lots of shops you can check out reviews i, I if you go on youtube and look for the bottle in um the bottled imp he does the best reviews of all the box sets, so you can kind of decide what you want to get. Um, as it's like lots of pick and choose. Pegasus have picked up the license now, so you can get all of the things, including the tunnel system that links the city to the dungeon. Now, that brings me... Oh, yeah, there's one thing I need to say about the shop as well. The shop has a pet shop, and the pet shop is phenomenal, and your character needs to have a pet. Like, it's it's great. The pet can give you dice manipulation on top of your fate because um, you do get fate tokens in the game which let you to re-roll die and um, you can get pets that kind of refresh that or give you a free fate every round and the stuff though that lets you kind of move one space at a time. Like if you really get close to something you want, you can just get it, go next to it next turn. So there's like really cool things in there. There's also a stable so you can get like a, even a battle horse. So when you roll combat, when you, when you roll a dice and you move and then go into combat, you'll actually use your movement of the horse on top of your attack. It's like epic. You're like going in there, um, riding this battle horse, going in straight for like this um, ambush almost. It's fantastic. You can even get a horse and cart there if you're hoarding loads of items around and it's like a pleasure to actually look through the decks. There's a potion shop in there, there's training in there, you know, it's, it's, there's actually, it's an essential corner. But if you've only got this so far, you're going to be like level 7 and how are you going to get to level 10? Well, you can go back through the mountain, of course, and keep rolling city and mountain, but you're going to get, it's going to feel a little bit, you're going to need, we know, where is that space to get to 10? Well, bang, the dungeon is. You get to level 7, you go into the dungeon, it's hard as nails. It really is hard as nails. I just want to point out that the, the, there's a small box expansion called the Blood Moon, where you have a werewolf going around the map, and as an NPC, if you get a 6 on the die, you get to move him one space and he can bite characters and turn them into a... Gives them lycanthrope um, card. They get a special card to go with a sheet. Now that comes with a card. You can just see it in the middle. I'll put an arrow here. And that has a day and night cycle. So at the minute it's, this, it's daytime. Which means that all enemies have a minus one on the attack. And if an event happens from the adventure deck it's the card switches over and when it becomes nighttime it's plus one and like 
you can feel it amazing going into the dungeon when it's daytime, and then if an event pulls and it goes dark time, you're like, oh my god, because they are hard when you go in there. Now, if you get the bridge expansion that goes in the city and the dungeon, I don't have a picture of it here, but when you go in the dungeon, you can like go into the cellar of the dungeon and there's a there's a, like a side mini boss that you can take and he has a good um loot as well and um so you can kill that side boss and then continue on to the big boss at the end of the dungeon he's like really hard to defeat he's like a, a strength 12 so um you you've really got to have some like really good equipment and followers that give you buffs in combat and things like that but if you just come from the city you're going to be kind of buffed up and ready for the dungeon that's going to feel great now if you come out of the dungeon and you're still level eight maybe level nine you're still not ready for the center if you go at level nine it'll still be difficult so you want to hit 10 that's where the forest comes in. You want to come here when you're high level because the enemies in here are no joke. And hopefully in your journey that you've took now, you're going to be, you'll have an alignment because your alignment is going to affect things in the forest. And it's going to be important to have fate in the forest too. Um, and stuff like that. And the enemies that you can fa face here are just like... It's like the most bizarre place of the adventure. When you enter the forest, you'll actually get a path card. And this card will give you some attributes when you go through the forest. And you're trying to fulfill a destiny by the end of the forest. And when you, when you do the destiny choice, you've got like a deck to choose from to choose what your destiny is. And if you're rolling an evil character, um, one of the destinies allows you to force your opponents to re-roll one of their dice. So if, the, if they're in combat, let's say, with a boss, and they roll a six to, to beat the, the boss, you're like, no, re-roll it. I want to see that rolled again. And you can force them then to get a one, maybe, and they will lose that battle. And that's because your destiny was to make you super dark. Now, the player interaction in Talisman is very, very high. In fact, if you get bitten by the werewolf, that, that means every time you land on a character, you're going to be forced to bite them. So there's this interesting dynamics that are going on here, and there's lots of spells that you're going to be casting at each other too as you go through the game. But the forest expansion also brings in Dark Fate because when you start the game with... When you start the game, you get fate tokens. You've got to turn it to the light or dark side. And if you gain any fate in the game, you've got to decide, is it going to be dark fate or light fate? Light fate means I can reroll my die. Dark fate means I'm going to force my opponent to also roll their die. Reroll their die. So, but the way, like the route that I've said is kind of one of the recommended paths. But for example, we played Talisman this week. Uh, I had a character. She was like a 3-3. Three, three, so she was like a really bad character to start with. <sighs> but she was um, like a cultist. I can't remember what she was. But there's that many characters in the game. It's ridiculous. So I was like rolling around the outside and the other two people they were already in the mountains and um i eventually got into the mountains but when i got there i got some really good gems and i then went to the city did some fantastic shopping and in the city there is a wharf which um, lets you travel anywhere on the river and i got the river to the middle center where the door is use the talisman just to go right through and head up to the crown of command but during the game my god the events were coming thick and thin and one of the events was like a resurrection of the dead and anybody that had trophies which mean you know when you defeat an enemy you take that card as a trophy you'll turn it in for gold in the city or you'll turn it in for experience to level up 
it, it stole everybody's <laughs> trophies that they'd not used and resurrected them on the board, which was f absolutely fantastic because one of the players went into the city and was fighting a jailer and defeated him. And he was resurrected. And when he came out of the city, he decided to attack the t jailer again and lost in combat and was thrown in jail. <laughs> so, oh my God. And weird stuff happened. One of the players cast a spell on me, which meant I became Lycanthrope. And that was a spell that came obviously with the Blood Moon expansion because every expansion you get and every little expansion you get, they're adding to the main adventure deck, they're adding to the spell deck and they're having their own deck too. Um, the One of the players went into the dungeon, he actually lost on the boss though and he throws you out of the dungeon if that happens. And the boss in the dungeon has like a massive treasure chest of amazing, amazing weapons. The best items and equipment in the game are from the dungeon boss. Phenomenal if you can defeat him. And we also had an event which meant that the end condition had to be changed out and you had to randomly choose a hidden one. Um, the When you get the end cards, some of them have a moon icon on them, which means that these are hidden. And a hidden one was chosen. And when I got to the Crown of Command, because I took a boat into the center, the, um, the center was the werewolf. And it said on the card, if you're not a werewolf, you've got to fight him. But if you've got Lycanthrope, which I did, because my opponent cast it on me, then you become like the Blood Moon's Apprentice kind of thing. And I was firing. <laughs> I actually was stronger than the actual Crown of Command um, ability um, with, with, as a Lycanthrope. And I was, I basically won because I was taking everybody out. So it was like really interesting how the dynamics changed everything around. And um, yeah, and these are kind of the fun stories that come out. For example, when the two opponents headed, headed into the forest and they both got turned into a frog in the forest as they met the frog king. <laughs> Just, this is what happens. Bad luck can happen to you in this game. And I, I really felt in my game that I w had a really bad start, but the middle to end game is where I kind of really came into it and did it. But it was the first time I'd not gone in the dungeon in ages with Talisman. It really was. That's kind of the fun you can have in the mountain with money coming out of there. Um, but yeah, and if you've got a playgroup that likes Talisman, they there is a dragon expansion which replaces the center of the board. And you have a dragon's tower then, and it's really hard. It's like raid hard, super hard mode. And um, we're going to be playing that next week it's really exciting to um grind your teeth on it but if you've got the four corner boards like this you're really going to feel like you're on an epic adventure everyone's going their own path you'll be interacting with each other yes but uh, the game time though is going to be it's i would say two hours plus one hour per person so if you're playing two players it's three hours if you're playing four players it's four hours and if you're playing four then get ready for your six hour and the t the table hog <laughs> the table hog that it is you might need side table for um doing stuff because what you're looking at here i'll bring it up fully now this is not what I have at the minute. I have much more here. and But I'll tell you, my favourite ending, and this, it's um, an ending that everybody sees at the beginning. And um, it's... When you get to the centre, you get hold of the most dangerous spells ever created in the world of Talisman. They're not even in the spell deck. And you start firing these at your enemies around the board. And if you run out of spells, then everybody else wins. But if you lose, but these spells are like epic in um, 
and just to get these in your hand is going to be like so fun but um it's like if you're playing that and you know that is the end where all these spells are going to hit you your gameplay changes and you're going to be trying to go to places which gain life so you've got like extra life and you definitely want to get armor and things like that so it, it kind of changes your gameplay um yeah and you can get all this stuff now and i'm just going to go over to miniature market now and i'll tell we'll go through the boxes so let me just jump over there here it is so the blood moon is absolutely fantastic i love the um werewolf going around the board he is amazing and he had a massive impact on our game this week the reaper Another fantastic small box expansion adds another NPC to the board. He goes around super, super fun if he gets you. I'm telling you now, amazing. Now, the dragon expansion, you're going to need four corner boards for this because there's no way you can face those dragons off the vanilla board. No way. You're going to need to defeat the Dungeon Lord to get the amazing items. And you're going to need the best stuff from the city to even attack these dragons. They are the biggest bosses in the game, period. Do, don't buy this unless you are very familiar with Talisman and the Four Corners. Because you are going to be blown away <laughs> by it. This is going to destroy you. Now, the Frost March is another fantastic addition. You're going to want all these small box expansions, but the Frost March has some wicked spells in there, which you're going to want to get, and some great end um, um, endings that you can put in. The, Ro the Lost Realms is an absolute essential expansion. It adds the tunnel and the sewer system that links the city to the dungeon giving you the rat king so there's a boss now in the city and the side boss in the dungeon so there's now two bosses in the dungeon it is an absolute must it also comes with the lost realms which is um the one of the rarest expansions ever to make talisman it's the end condition where you get the epic spell deck and you're firing out these nuclear bombs to your enemies the dungeon expansion, this is going to be phenomenal to get up there towards level 8, level 9. Fantastic, like I've said, absolutely needed. Now, the Cataclysm replaces the center board, and thematically I'll talk about that, because um, on this row here, actually, Sacred, Sacred Pool, absolutely fantastic too, definitely get that. All these small box expansions have spells in them that are unique and when you put them in the spell deck it just gets so much fatter and unpredictability comes from spells. Now the Harbinger is another NPC that is going to be uh, like the Harbinger is going to be procrastinating doom that's coming to Talisman and you want to going to you want to going to play the Harbinger with the Firelands expansion because in the Firelands, the map is going to start to get destroyed in the center. So ideally what you want to do is play one game session with the Harbinger of the Firelands. And then when you play game session two, then you roll the Cataclysm expansion, which replaces the center board. But that's super niche. <laughs> super niche. It's like we're going to play Talisman at Christmas and we're going to play it twice. So I'm going to bring in the Harbinger and the Finelands for the first one. And for the second time, we're going to bring in the Cataclysm. That's the only route that I, I would play them in when there's two back-to-back -back things, say, at Christmas. Woodland expansion, absolutely fantastic. I, I keep calling the Highland the Mountains because it's the Mountain King, I think. And um, yeah, it's, it's super cool. The Four Corners are a must. There's the um, Talisman Vanilla at a $48 price from here. Hmm. Now, what do I think of the Speciality Talismans? Well, the my opinion is they play too much like the Vanilla Talisman. And it's not got a scope 
that talisman has because you go on an epic adventure every time you play talisman with the four corners it's different every time different stories it's very very cool unpredictable in nature and that is is a blessing it really is so these these speciality ones i'm i would only consider getting these when they start to get expansions that's what i feel about them the city over here is another phenomenal one it is out of stock here but good luck trying to find that around pegasus um do um it, they do sell out of talisman and it does come back so you just got to keep your eye on it when it comes and all that jazz oh and the if you're not painting your minis the lost realms actually comes with some colored bases so that's easier to track your mini on the board so it is all wonderful now the way i roll it is the talisman fourth edition box is big enough to house all the cards in all the expansions amazingly <laughs> it is frankly amazing it could hold all the cards i then have another um I use my Blood Boon box to hold all the minis. They're all inside that box. I use the Frost March box to have all of the character classes and the end conditions and the frog cards. They go in there. And the, I think it's the dungeon. Where's the dungeon in here? The dungeon box is where I put all the boards. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah, there it is. And the Dragon Expansion, I keep all of its components inside that box because it's a unique thing and it's only for hardcore players that. Um, but by all means, you know, if you do get it, you do get some spells and stuff that you can put in. So there you go. Fancy Flight were doing it and they lost the license and Talisman became very expensive. It really did. And if you wanted the Lost Realms, which includes two small expansions, that would have cost above $200 in the retail to get the Fancy Flight edition. But the Pegasus edition is absolutely phenomenal. It's, I think it's better quality than Fancy Flight, to be honest. And the, I don't know why, but the minis look better. The, mini, the minis look better. So you're getting a, a better edition than I have with the Pegasus edition, I believe. So all that good stuff. Now, there's obviously a lot here to go for. Um, but vanilla and four corners is what you need. These smaller box expansions are going to really be phenomenal as well. The Lost Realms, I feel, is the essential small box, and Blood Moon is the second essential. But these other ones that you see here, go to the Bottled Imp, who will do an unboxing of all these, and he'll tell you how they play. And um, like I said, I'm going to leave an ex I'm going to leave some links below this video so you can check out the Bottled Imp. He's like a he does some great reviews of talisman products, so all that stuff. But it is really the granddaddy of adventure games. It is in its fourth edition. It's been, it's almost four, going on its 40th year coming up. Oh my God. And it really is amazing. And if there's anything missing from Talisman, it is the weird and wacky cosmic expansion which had like wormholes <laughs> it had its own you different board where you could travel in time and space to go into wormhole but we've not seen that i think from the second we did we haven't seen that since the second edition third edition didn't touch it fancy fly didn't touch it or the the license ran out before they could touch it so we don't know will pegasus spiel bring out that that um last expansion that the second edition had. We don't know, but... <laughs> but there it is. One last thing to talk about. The Tur Up and Tur Down 
um, gets better as you play it and you rearrange your decks in the box to make it a quicker setup on the table. So that comes better with experience. I can set Talisman up on the table within 15 minutes and tear it down in 10. That's what I feel. So um, it is super good. But I'll tell you, it is my guilty pleasure. I know lots of people think it, it's roll die, it's like Monopoly and it's really boring, but they just don't have an understanding of what epic nights you can have with this. And in my opinion, are completely wrong. Especially with dice mitigation from the fate tokens that you get in the fourth edition. And all that jazz. And there's many ways to dice mitigate from the shops in the city to actually adventure card drops and treasures from the bosses that give you card that give you dice manipulation. So it's all it's all really there and um, and the beauty of the adventure is the adventure deck changes your strategy it really does and that's great and the adventure deck is ridiculously big <laughs> in one game I'm only going through 10% of the adventure deck and I don't shuffle it so that that 10 I don't shuffle it until the whole deck's gone through. <laughs> it's just this atomic level of like cards. It's unbelievable. And um, and that's it. And as you go through each corner expansion, you're getting new enemies. As you go through even the little tunnel expansion, you're getting new enemies. And um, that's what it's all about. And these small box adventures that add into the adventure deck, add into spells, giving you more heroes, giving you more gameplay options, and even giving you different endings. It's something really to collect, really. So, so there we go. But I'm telling you now, when I look at Kickstarters doing adventures like The Witcher, and you want the all-in price of over $100, you can get Talisman and the Four Corner expansions for that and have, in my opinion, a better time with more replayability and giving you really a fantasy adventure like you're not going to see ever. And uh, yeah, it's totally, totally cool. Great art across the board and a fascinating, spectacular event that you can put on at your house. But make sure you've got lots of drinks, six pack of beers and all that jazz. And I'll tell you now, what a gaming night you've got coming. So yeah, that's my final opinions of Talisman. It's one of my favorite games ever. And um, if you've got a gaming group and you've got the time, then, um, then it's, it's phenomenal. And when I said to my game group that I want to play Talisman, they were like, yeah. And it's the first time I've ever seen them all come early because they know, they know that it takes that it, it takes time anyway peeps thank you so much for watching please leave your comments down below if you've played talisman i know there's lots of people who played vanilla and have not liked it and i can kind of understand that um it's very limited it's like a snapshot of the what of, of talisman when really it's much bigger beast let me know if you've got the four corners, how much you enjoy it, and all that good stuff. I really want to hear your thoughts on it. And yeah, please like the video and all that jazz. And thank you so much for watching. You've been listening to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I've been your host, Lipstick Paddy. You take her, stay safe, and bye-bye for now.